Okay, class, time to bring out your slide rulers and your calculators. I'm going to talk to, to you about some psychological math today. Actually, I'm going to teach you an equation that I hope is going to help you understand how you sometimes have some confusion and frustration as you engage with narcissistic individuals. Now, as, before I get to the equation, there are a couple of terms that I want to make sure that we're square on. Uh, the first is covert narcissism, and we've talked about that in some other videos. Keep in mind that overt narcissists are very enamored with themselves, and there's hardly any mistake about where they're coming from. Uh, they can be loud and brash and forceful and, and uh, unambiguous in the way that they want to control you. Whereas the covert narcissist, well, they also like to be in control, but they're going to be much more subtle about it. They don't want to be vulnerable emotionally in the sense that uh, they don't want you to necessarily see uh, the, the, uh, the schemes that they're in. They, they want to uh, keep it disguised. And then the second term that I want us to remember is the term gaslighting. When you have a person that gaslights, Basically, we're talking about someone who wants to uh, make you question your reality. They want you to feel confused. And so here's the equation. Covert narcissism plus gaslighting equals your anxiety. Now, there are six different ways that uh, the covert narcissist can gaslight you that will put you into an emotionally distraught state. And as you're able to be on to this, I'm hoping that they're going to be less and less effective, of course, as the time goes on. So let me run through these, and then let's see if we can come up with some thoughts at the end of this. Now, the first way that a covert narcissist can, uh, can uh, create uh, confusion in you is through what we refer to as intermittent reinforcement. Now that's probably a term that you don't use very often, but uh, let me see if I can give you a, uh, a sense of what that is. Some people, when they interact with you, are very consistent, highly predictable. Uh, day after day, they give you the same kind of messages. You know where you stand and you know what they believe. And so we would say that would be a consistent reinforcement. They reinforce the notion of who they are and what they believe about you over and over and over. When we say that a person has intermittent reinforcement, they're very inconsistent in the way that they uh, present themselves and how they respond to you. As an example, it may be that you'll be in the presence of someone and uh, they're very friendly. They seem to be totally curious about who they are or who you are, and they, they want to know about how you tick and, and what your experiences are. And then the next time you see them, it's like they barely remember who you are. They don't, uh, they don't ask any kind of follow-up questions. They're very disinterested. And then another time, it's like they're back to the friendly thing. And then three or four times later, it's like, I don't care about you. And it leaves you wondering, hey, wait a minute. What's going on here? Well, you have a covert narcissist. They're wanting to stay in control. They're gaslighting you. They want you to stay confused. And if you call them out on it, They'll just look at you and say, what are you talking about? That, that's, that's not the case. And so intermittent reinforcement is a very uh, common covert narcissistic ploy uh, that they use. And you may ask, well, are they doing this on purpose? And part of the answer is, yeah, they kind of are. It's like, I, I don't want you to have uh, a fixed notion about who I am because that means that I'm inside your box and I'm not going to do that. And so, yeah, it's their way of trying to keep control over you. A second uh, way that covert narcissists can gaslight you. And that is they can entice you to share personal information only to use it against you at a later time. So it may be that uh, you're in a conversation with that person and they're asking questions like, well, tell me more about that, what happened. Or I can see that this uh, created some frustration. What was that all about anyway? Or when you told me that yesterday that this, that, and the other happened, what, what was the deeper story there? And so they can seem to be really curious and interested in you. And then later on, let's suppose that you hear from a friend, hey, uh, uh, so-and-so told me that you, know, you had this, that, and the other kind of problem. And you're thinking, wait a minute, I, I didn't intend to tell my uh, person over here these kinds of things, only to have it uh, go on to the social grapevine. And, and you see later, or, or it may be that that narcissistic individual uh, uses the information against you later. Uh, and you have told them something about how you felt and what your beliefs are. And then later on, they scorn you because of what you told them. That's the gaslighting. Uh, that's the covert style of narcissism. 
It, uh, at first, they can appear friendly and into you, only to, for you to realize they were just collecting data against me. I'm someone for them to play, and that's what they do. A, a third uh, thing that a person can do that's part of this gaslighting uh, of the covert style, it's what I call true lies. Now, that seems like an oxymoron, isn't it? Here's an illustration. Let's suppose that the narcissist has taken something of yours and thrown it away. They threw it in the trash. And then later on, you come to them and say, hey, have you seen this item? And that person can look straight at you and say, I have no idea where that is right now. And, and it's true. They don't know. What they're really saying is, I don't know where the city dump is. And so they'll set something up, and then as they talk with you about whatever the problem is, they can talk with you in a seemingly truthful kind of way, but they're leaving out large gaps of information uh, that would fill in the communication in a much fuller way. Now, has that ever happened to you? Uh, and so they pick and choose when and how they're going to be honest, uh, but then behind all of that seeming honesty is a dishonest or a disingenuine form of engaging with you. Pretty insidious, isn't it? A fourth way that the covert narcissist can uh, gaslight you and lead to your anxiety is that they can take some of your um, experiences or your feelings and impressions and try to make you fit it into their logical grid. For example, let's suppose that you say something simple about you were engaging with someone and you had a frustrating uh, conclusion to that, uh, to that engagement with that person. And so that covert narcissist can say, well, don't you think that that person was kind of having a bad day? Or uh, was that person threatening you? Or uh, why did you have to bring up that topic in the first place? Or did you tell them this? <laughs> and so as you're trying to share your feelings and your interpretations, instead of saying, yeah, let's talk about that. It's like they've got an agenda for you in that moment. You should have thought this and you should have done it that way. And you might have, you might be thinking, but I, I thought you were somebody that I could tell my personal things to and, uh, and they only illustrate through that kind of behavior. Well, you can tell personal things to me so that I can then show you my superiority. And, and it's not a normal style of communication. Uh, uh, covert narcissism, gaslighting, anxiety. Now, a fifth thing that these individuals can do, and that is they can bar you from confronting them uh, and offering a conflicting perspective. For example, let's suppose that you come to that person and there's been a strain or a tension between you and them, and you can say, hey, there's something I want to talk with you about. And so their response is, who's been nice to you lately? Look at all of the, the good things that I've done to help you out, and you're going to complain to me? And so, in essence, what they're saying is it's invalid for you to think anything other than wonderful things about me. Or they may say something like, so remember yesterday when I helped you out with this? Does that not count for anything? And so, in doing so, it just drives you crazy. It's like, well, I guess I, I can't say anything about it. Now that they've done something nice, I'm in a perpetual state of, uh, of uh, owing them. And so, they're thinking, yeah, that's exactly the way I want you to think. And then finally, another way that these covert narcissists can, uh, can mess with your emotions is they can seem available, but over time, as you get to know them more deeply, you realize... I don't really know that person all that well. And it, uh, for example, there can be somebody who, uh, who seems to be curious about you or they'll talk with you about all sorts of things about your life. And then over time, it's like, but you know what? They don't really share on a deep level about who they are and what some of their hurts and needs and experiences might be. What's that all about? And uh, that's the covert person's way of saying, I stay in control. And the way I stay in control is I don't make myself vulnerable. Uh, I want you to be vulnerable because that keeps me in the superior position, but you're not thinking in that game playing kind of way. They're covert, they're gaslighting, you wind up in anxiety. 
So knowing that they have these kind of tactics, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, there are a couple of takeaways that you can uh, come with so that, uh, so that this, anxiety, this uh, equation doesn't uh, come true with you and you just walk away with a whole lot of anxiety. And the first is know what you're dealing with. As you see somebody having this more subtle approach to control, realize that it, it's still control. And this person is attempting to stay in the one-up position over you. And rather than thinking, I wish you wouldn't do that, acknowledge that's just what some people do. Some people give the appearance that they might be interested in relating well with you when in fact, uh, they, they know they've got to be on the social scene, but they, they got to stay in that upper position and just know that that's who they are. That's how they, uh, they roll. And that's not going to be somebody who's going to be on your inner circle, know what you're dealing with, and then uh, set your expectations accordingly. And then that leads to a very strong second uh, thought about that is, and uh, about that, and that is don't keep angling for their approval. Um, because one of the things they want to do is they want to keep you uh, guessing about whether they're going to accept you or not. It, it just recognize if, if I have to jump through all these little hoops and they're going to play these little mind games with me, I'm not interested. You may still have to engage with that person at a, a certain level, but that's not something that uh, that's going to become part of your self-esteem and your self-image thinking, well, I've got to run everything through that person's grid. No, just uh, realize that's not the individual that you're going to look to to help you uh, feel like you've got a, a satisfied way of life. Uh, as you have a well-conceived plan about who you are and you're pleased with the way that you do life and how you manage people and events and circumstances, that becomes your foundation for your self-esteem. Uh, so just know that there's an equation out there. Uh, they want to keep you guessing and they can be very sl uh, sly and sneaky in the way they do things. But your anxiety doesn't have to hinge off of that. Uh, that's something that you can take care of as you learn how to trust yourself and to, uh, to move forward in life with your good decision-making intact. I hope you do gain some, uh, some insight from videos such as this. I I've mentioned to you before, I'm really pleased when you allow me to be a part of your journey and I take my role in it seriously. And I, I love it when I know that you all are really trying to grind this thing out and, and learn and, and make adjustments in the way that you engage with some of the narcissistic individuals in your life. Now, beneath the video, you're going to see a subscribe button. If you've not already done so, I would encourage you to hit that. We also have beneath the video a link for, uh, for you to give us your email so that we can keep you up to date with some new things uh, that we have going on. Uh, we actually have some smaller videos and some articles that are not gonna be out there for public usage, uh, but we want to make them available to you. And then also some, uh, some events and things of that nature. So sign up to our email list. And then uh, if you are in need of online counseling, we have a link below here for that. We have my books and some of my online workshops. And so I'm hoping that you would avail yourself to those things that we have below the video. Again, thanks for letting me be a part of your journey. And all that said, I'll see you next time.